Yes, I am a total bitch. I owe you guys a podcast. This is late. This is coming out way late. In theory, I'll be back on track come Friday, although Friday's podcast may also come out late. And this is, of course, also theory. And as we know, theory and reality are, in theory, exactly the same. I had a lot going on. A lot of creativity shit going on right now. Working on some websites, revamping, working on some teaching I got going on. I'm getting ready to... Still working on launching a new podcast, which also has got to happen real fucking soon. Like, really fucking soon. Because... Oh shit, I think that's on Wednesday. Yeah, I gotta check that on my schedule. So yeah, I got a lot of stuff going on, and... The pile is over there, and there's a pile over there, and there's stuff to talk about. And I'm sure I'll come up with some stuff to talk about. You know, when you get into the groove of creating things and doing things, I think it's always a good idea to roll with that. And just let it happen and get shit done. I always tell when I'm in the groove and making things happen because when I have to remind myself to go eat food, that's a good indicator that I'm making excellent progress on getting shit done. And here lately, I've had to remind myself to go to, fi- go, to, go to food. I've had to remind myself to eat food. I've also had to remind myself to go to bed. Normally, I'm ready for beddy time at 9 p.m., get in the bed, read a book for a while, turn out the lights, listen to an audiobook, fall asleep in the middle of the audiobook, wake up the next morning, or actually, I usually I always fall asleep during the audiobook, then I wake back up, and I don't know how many chapters have gone by, and I gotta back up and find out, get back to the point where I remember what was going on. I'm looking, I'm, God, listening. I'm listening to a good book right now. It's called Why the West Rules for Now. I have the hard copy right here. I was reaching over to get it, but I'm actually listening to the audiobook, but I got the hard copy as well to look at the charts and the graphs and the maps. It's called Why the West Rules for Now, The Patterns of History and What They Reveal About the Future by Ian Morris. It's pretty interesting. It's very, very interesting. He's talking about why does Western, the Western world essentially rule the planet Earth? And why is that? Why, how did that come to be? And how long that's going to happen? At least that's inferred from the title. I haven't got that far along yet. It has some fantastic history in it. And the, he talks about the emergence of Homo sapiens and, of course, the emergence of the state. It's pretty fucking deep. I'm not prepared to talk too much about what's in here yet in any sort of analytical way because I'm still listening to the book and still digesting it. But it's pretty, it's pretty interesting and it's pretty impressive. And we'll talk about this, though. He talks about how, because if you look at human evolution, agriculture and domestication of animals happened initially in, like, the biggest spurt. God damn it, where was it? Like, in the southern southern Europe is where I want to say it was. I think my brain is hurting because I haven't prepared anything on here. But anyhow, you know, it'd be easy to try to say, well, that happened because the people there were smarter than the people elsewhere. But he goes through and he looks at it and he points out that the reason it happened there first is because in that area of the world, there were the most number of animals that could be domesticated 
and the largest number of grains that were domesticatable. For example, if I remember correctly, he pointed out that in North America, the number of animals that could be domesticated at this time was zero, as opposed to the number of animals in this area that could be domesticated was, I, I want to say it was something like eight, nine, ten, something like that. I don't remember the exact number, so don't quote me on any of this. Read the fucking book. But the point is that domestication of animals and plants arose in that area first not because those people were necessarily smarter than people anywhere else on the planet but because the natural resources were available to them there in that location in order to make that happen and that's the sort of interesting insights that come from this book because to a large extent we don't real i think people don't take into account how much what we have to work with influences what we're able to accomplish. Right Nowadays, people can do a lot of things like create podcasts, write blogs, create websites, create videos. And we can do these things because of what we have available to us. And why do we have those things available to us? Well, because we're in North America, in the United States, and that makes another set of another set of tools and another set of resources available to us. And we would like to think, I believe people would like to think that if we were plopped down into some strange foreign land, that we'd be the same person capable of creating the same thing. And I don't think that's necessarily true. Because so much of what we're able to do comes from that which is around us. And that makes me wonder... Do we... Do we actually need the state in order to arrive at anarchy? Because in a stateless society, you wouldn't necessarily have the tools or the incentive to recognize... Let's put it this way. In a stateless society, if there's no state, there would be nothing there for you to look at and recognize that as the state and thus nothing to create anarchy you know, as a response to the state With in an absence of the state there's nothing to respond to so anarchy would be the natural state of things because there would be no state but would it necessarily be identifiable it's like the whole thing they say that you never you never think about oxygen until you don't have any, right? You never think about air until you don't have any. I think it's the same thing with anarchy. You don't think about anarchy until it's gone. And so for us as a society to... Well, I shouldn't say for us as a society. For people such as myself and others in this society to recognize the merits and the intellectual isms and the philosophies of anarchy, did we need to have a state in order to respond to and test the theories of anarchy against? That's just me thinking out loud mostly, mostly because I just need to do a podcast and get something out today. And I'm throwing that out. But yeah, this book... Why the West Rules for Now by Ian Morris. Highly recommend it. It's really, really interesting. Will make you think. Hmm. Will make you think quite a bit. 
comparing Eastern cultures to Western cultures. And a big thing he also goes into is how exactly do we divide Eastern culture from Western culture? You know, what is that dividing point? Is it just lines on a map, which he says it isn't, and is it things like skin color, and he says he isn't. And so in this quest to divide East from West, he's looking for very clear lines and indicators that delineate Eastern culture from Western culture, things that can be very precisely defined so as to make this as scientifically rigorous and as, uh, as objective as he possibly can. So I applaud his effort, and it's, like I say again, it's a totally fascinating book. And yeah, I think that's going to wrap up this Anarchy Moment. I'm just going to get this published and move on with multiplicity of other projects that I have going on right now. Hopefully Friday, if I get my shit together. I'm also trying to come up with a domain name for a link shortener. All the good ones are gone. Ah, oh, God, it sucks. Trying to be creative. Fucking... Oh, it's hard to force it. Trying to come up with a fucking unique domain, duh, domain name, which is available, is fucking killer. And I'm still fucked over from when I lost this hour of my life thanks to daylight savings time. It's like it's almost eight o'clock here, and I feel like it's like four p.m. Ah, oh, my fucking sleep cycle is just destroyed because of work and also because of getting fucked out of that hour. Anyhow, hopefully. Friday, I'm going to be back on track with a full episode of Stating the Obvious. Got some stuff to go through, and yeah, we'll have fun. So, thanks for listening, and I know this was rambling and bizarre, but I just wanted to just throw some kind of thoughts out there for you. Alright, thanks y'all. Take care. <laughs>